Hello and welcome to this Interbase Labs. My name is Stephen Ball and we're going to be covering user security in this section. Now user security is a very important topic um, but it's also one that is quite often hard to navigate around. So there's some great things set up within Interbase to help you um, do this in a way that's easy to manage and we're going to look at how different users are defined, how roles help within the formation of a data security policy uh, and then also you know, using that um, at runtime. And we'll also look at the ways that you make it possible for user security to exist by granting and revoking access to tables, stored procedures and so on. So let's get into the basics of it. But one of the key things that really helps with data security is understanding two specific roles. And that's the role of the data controller and data processors. So as you build your requirements for your system, the data controller is the person who's really going to help you pick out who should be seeing what data. Talking to the data processors, you can really start to identify the roles that are going to be performed from a functional point within the organization. So if that's a marketing role or a salesperson role or a sales manager role, you can start to define out what different roles exist. The data controller should then be able to help you identify what that data, what those roles should be able to see within the database. And it may be that multiple roles have access to the same data. Um, you might have somebody who wears multiple hats, so exists under multiple roles. Um, but having a role-based setup allows you to define that and then make sure that the right people can see the right data. But the data controller is very much a key person to go find um, when you're defining out uh, and setting up your user security. So in short, the basics of user security is all about who gets to see what, who can access what data. And that comes back to the data controller defining who and what purpose data exists for and how it's going to be processed. And it's important that you understand who should be accessing data and who should have access to specific data. Because by defining that in the data layer, you're able to start putting some control in place to prevent privilege abuse. Where people have the privilege to access the data in the database, but they can only access the right data within the database. And user security in combination with encryption which is a separate topic that we're not going to cover in this session, but um, the encryption side then really build a strong foundation for, for building any data um, dictionary and, and usage. So there's two key users that you need to be aware of within database for user security. Now, the first one is the database owner. They can um, grant access um, initially um, but good practice would actually define that you use the SysDSO to revoke the grant rights from the database owner and then go ahead and use the database security login to say who can see what data and who can unencrypt and decrypt specific data. Um, that way the, the database owner can manage the structure um, but the security um, can be managed by the um, the, the data controller login, really, which is the SysDSO. Now, um, typically the database owner is SysDBA, unless you create the database with a different owner. Um, if you need to do that, the easiest thing is just to create a new user in your interbase server, and then once you've done that, create a new database with that user as the owner rather than SysDBA. Now, one of the other basics around user security is that it's either embedded inside the database or you can actually use the admin.ib. Now if you use the admin.ib then um, the user security runs across multiple different databases. If you want the user security to be specific to an individual database then you can use the deeply embeddable um, version where the user security table is actually inside the database. And if you're going to use the encryption on the database, then you really, well, you do need to have the embedded um, security on the database. 
The admin.ib can be useful if you have, say, four or five databases and you want to keep the username and password common across all of them, then that can be a useful um, mechanism at that point. Now, as we go through the slides today, there's um, this docwiki, docwiki.embarcadero.com um, forward slash interbase. Um, if you go there, then you'll get to basically the home page, but everything up to the language, um, there's some page slugs that you're going to see as we go through, and they're the key bit that you just need to add to the end of this URL to be able to get straight to all the really cool documentation that we have online for Interbase. So what can you can control with user security? Well, firstly, you can define who can select data. That's important. If you don't want people to be able to read a table or specific columns within a table, then you can basically not give them the right to select the data. And select is um, an important uh, an important privilege because you could do a select statement where salary is greater than 10,000 and less than 11,000 to try and work out what somebody's salary is, for example. Um, so you need to be aware of you know, what you can do with a select when you're trying to prevent privilege abuse. Um, we also have the ability to insert, update and delete. Um, so you may want somebody to be able to insert a record but not update it or delete it or not even you know, select it. Um, we have the ability to encrypt and decrypt. There's also reference. So you may want to grant the reference capabilities to allow a foreign key to use a lookup on another table that's not owned by the same database user. So within Interbase, you can have multiple tables with different database owners. And if you've got um, a, a table maybe with country codes in it and you want another database table to be able to look up the country codes, then you can grant a reference um, and then that will allow it to look up the data. You can also grant execute. Now execute is used around stored procedures. So if you want to execute a stored procedure, then uh, you need to have the rights to be able to execute it. Now I've mentioned a little bit about users and roles already. And roles are very integral to uh, good practice in setting up uh, user security. Now you could set up user security um, just on the individual user role, uh, sorry, on the individual user. But by creating and defining roles and then having users attached to those roles, then it becomes a lot easier to manage your database security. So you can see here, you, know, you might have a user that's just got one key to specific um, roles that they fulfill. And you may have people that are cross-functional, um, so have multiple different keys. Now, creating a role is really simple. You just type in create role, role name, and execute it on the database. And that will create a role that can do absolutely nothing. Uh, what you then need to do is you need to grant specific access to that role. So for example here we could have grant update and um, you can do multiple elements within here. Um, so you could have grant select, insert, update and delete on and uh, these are just comma separated or if you want to do everything you can just do grant all uh, on and then the table and then two and then you put in the username or the role name. So here we're just using the role administrator. And then what we're able to do is we're able to grant this role to a number of users within the database. So you can have a look. Um, it's create underscore role and drop underscore role on the doc wiki. So again, um, grant and revoke um, as a slightly higher topic level uh, in the doc wiki. Um, when you can grant specific privileges on the table to a role name and revoke um, as well. Now, one thing that is quite interesting is, uh, and especially if you've been around Interface for a while, are you actually aware that you can grant rights to procedures? So yeah, you could have the rights to run a procedure, and that procedure may have elevated security rights to go and do something that you wouldn't normally be able to do. So you may want to be able to insert records into an audit log that you have running when something happens go do something. 
Um, so you could grant select an update or insert on a table to a procedure and then pass in the procedure name. So even if you don't have rights as a user, that procedure can still process and run and do what it needs to do. Now, creating, altering and dropping users is pretty straightforward. Um, again, just create underscore user, alter underscore user and drop underscore user in DocWiki. Um, but really simple syntax, just create user, the name, and then just set and then you define what you want to have set. Now, the password is the minimum parameter that you need to pass in, uh, and that's a string quote. Uh, so you could do, for example, as we have at the bottom here, create user jdo, set password, and call it password, um, whatever you want to put in. To alter a user, um, just alter user, username, set, and then set the values up again. You can also set them active, inactive, um, which is quite useful if you want to temporarily um, prevent somebody from getting access to the database but don't want to drop their user altogether. Um, the final thing you can do is obviously just drop a user and then you just need to pass in the username. But once you've created the users then you just need to go through, if you're going to do role based then just assign the roles that they need to them. So beyond this, uh, Interbase Labs, I definitely recommend having a look at the Rise to the Data Security Challenge webinar that we did. Um, if you go to the short URL here, embt.co forward slash, and it's capital I, capital B, hyphen 5, hyphen 28. Um, that takes you through a whole set of um, security elements around Interbase, and um, definitely worth a, a watch. So... Before we finish, though, let's get into IB Console and just see how we can do some of the security work ourselves using the uh, the GUI. Okay, so I'm going to connect in here to my local database server using SysDBA master key. And under users, I'm going to create a new user called demo. And we're just going to give that password of demo as well. And what that's going to allow me to do is now create a new database on this machine. And I'm going to create this at C data. And let's call this demo.ib. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got the embedded user authentication in here, which will allow me to deeply embed the user security inside the database. I'm not going to use encryption um, just for convenience at this point. Um, we can always encrypt the database later, uh, but if you're doing this from scratch, then you can always have that on yourselves. Now, instead of using SysDBA to create the database, we're going to use the new user that we just created. And what that does, that means that the database is owned by demo rather than SysDBA. So if we come and have a look in the users, we can see that demo is the user of this database. So let's go ahead now and I'm just going to nick from this database here the metadata for country and I'm just going to create the domains and create the table here quickly. So I have an empty table with some country data and we can see straight away that this table is owned by our demo user. Now if we just go to the data, I'm just going to import so we have something to see from the desktop. I have country.xml. I just need to tell it it's an XML file. Um, match those fields together and we should have some data. Great. And let's just see that through a SQL window. Select star from country and we can see the data. Now because we have the embedded user security, we can now go ahead and do create user foo set password equals, oh just set password isn't it, foo. So I've now created my new user and I'm also going to go ahead and create role 
general. And I'm going to grant general to foo. And if we now disconnect, and I'm going to connect up this time as foo using the general role. And you can obviously call it whatever you want. Um, but we should now be able to do select staff and country. Okay, that's not working because we haven't actually given the role any rights on the database yet. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, let's now connect in as demo. Okay, so now what we can do, we can go ahead and we can grant select to uh, on country to general. And if we disconnect and reconnect as foo, using the general role and do select star from country. We can now see because the role has the privilege and that role is assigned to the user, we now have the rights to connect into that. So this is very powerful, especially when you have say you know, 20, 30 salespeople and you want to give them the same privileges straight away, just being able to grant it to the role and allow that user to connect as that role. Uh, it's very, very straightforward. Okay, so that's about it. And I hope you found that as an int a useful introduction to the user security within Interbase. And uh, please do look at DocWiki for any more help that you need.